The ocean makes up most of our planet. Humans have always used it for sustenance and more, tried to understand it through science, and connect with it through culture. Inquisitive filmmakers have been recording the world beneath the waves for almost as long as we've had cameras. But what if this visual curiosity could become something analytical? With the addition of a bit of fishing knowledge, a scientific tool is born. Bruvs. Bruvs are baited remote underwater video systems. For the past couple of decades, bruvs have become an increasingly popular method for assessing the health of marine ecosystems. We get so much information on which animals actually exist in a specific habitat and how they use these areas. You can tell what species or family groups you're looking at, you can tell how much there is. All this information is gleaned from images collected using a fairly simple setup. A camera is mounted on a frame, pointing at a long arm supporting a container full of bait. If we just left them with no bait, we'd be getting incidental fish coming through, fish that are in the area but not necessarily coming to that specific point your herbivores, your corallivores. The bait actually brings in the, the, the bigger, more dominant, higher trophic level species. Accounting for fish with all different functions in the ecosystem is important to understanding the community you're studying. Bruvs become even more useful when a second camera is added. These are stereo rigs, so they've got a GoPro on each side, left and right. They're able to allow us to actually measure the animals. As long as a fish is visible by both cameras, you can then measure the length of the fish. We're able to use specialized software to do the measurement. Accurate length measurements can help inform about the health of an ecosystem. That takes us one step forward than just having the abundance and diversity. The size ranges can tell you a bit about how is it doing here? Is it mostly juveniles? Is it more adults? This group of scientists came together to study marine ecosystems in the Seychelles. We're an archipelago of 115. Islands. Mahe, the biggest island, is about 52 square kilometers. They're very, very small. And yet, the Seychelles' exclusive economic zone, their ocean territory, is as large as France. That's how vast the ocean is, I think, even if our EZ is the size of France, you know. But we're just a tiny dot on the map. The majority of our country is ocean, and we depend a lot on that. The first part of the mission took place in Aldabra. It's not only the most remote island group in the Seychelles, but one of the most remote places in the world. As a highly protected marine reserve, it's ideal to use non-invasive methods like bruvs to study it. The bruvs on this mission were divided into two working groups, pelagic and shallow. I am in charge of the pelagic bruvs. Pelagic is like open ocean, deep deep water. I am working with a steward on shallow bruvs to be specific. Shallow down to 60 meters. Shallow bruvs are a step up from the traditional method of surveying coral reef communities, underwater visual census, where scuba divers spend an hour counting which fish species and how many individuals are around. It's effective, but limited by the depth and time constraints that divers face. Bruvs are a really good method because they are able to do multiple deployments over a day as well as in depths beyond scuba diving depths. You get to see more, you get to have more data. And in the case of pelagic bruvs, you're reaching waters rarely explored by humans. We know what coral reef species are around, but we don't know what is in the open ocean. The open ocean is the largest habitat on Earth. We know that pelagic animals are important, but in many places, like the Seychelles, our knowledge about them is limited. So pelagic bruvs is just a way to try and dip into that a little bit and see what is maybe out there. You go out fishing and you see sharks, but what other sharks are there? What's hiding that we don't know? What are they doing there? Very often, the information we do have about pelagic communities is based on a source much less ideal than bruvs. What you know about what's out there in Seychelles all comes from fisheries, from bycatch, what ends up in the market. So we want to observe, document, see what there is there, see if the data actually correlates to what the fishermen are saying. Bruvs avoid the need to take fish out of water or put people in it, but deploying them is still a very hands-on process. The first step is dealing with your bait. 
admittedly the one invasive aspect of the method, though it's often fish that would otherwise go to waste. You usually have a standardized bait. We've been using bonito. Then it's time to head out to sea. The shallow team heads to the edge of the reef surrounding the atoll, while the pelagic team goes deep. The shallow brubs are then lowered to the bottom, where they'll stay for one hour. However, getting them properly placed isn't simple. Meanwhile, the pelagic team has a little more work cut out for them. Pelagic brubs have to be in deeper water, therefore you float them and they're all strung together. So we've got five rigs and each rig is separated by a 200 meter line. And there's buoys on the surface and the line that connects each rig is on the surface as well, but the rigs themselves sit on a so-called downline. The downlines suspend each rig about 10 meters deep. That's around 33 feet. After the fifth rig, we had a slightly longer line. You let that out and you attach that one to the boat. And turn the boat off and let it drift. We put each rig out for two hours to give time to let the animals come in. It takes two hours because the space you're sampling is so much larger and vast and less populated. We take a GPS point at each rig um, once we put it in the water. And then once we pick them up upon retrieval, then we can calculate which way the current was going, how far we drifted, how surface conditions affected the drift. When deploying any kind of bruvs, it's important to keep an eye on sea conditions. Strong currents, waves, and rough weather can arise quickly. So you have to just work around the weather and the sea conditions and just try to get as much as you can from the footage. Depending on currents and wind conditions, you can drift quite away. You never know where you're gonna end up, exactly. We've been experiencing strong currents here at Aldebra, and that makes things very difficult. It's not easy, but it is uh, field work, and it's expected when you do field work, anything can come up. Eventually, someone's gonna have to sit down and watch the videos in real time. I hope not many hours of blue. <laughs> of only blue. Watching pelagic brubs footage reminds you of the vastness of the sea. Of course, shallow bruv's footage requires patience too. For each hour of footage that you have collected from a bruv, you're looking at, depending on how busy the reef is, three to eight hours of analysis afterwards. Uh, so it's pretty time intensive, but the results are super. Footage analysis is where the quantitative power of the videos is truly revealed. We use a technique called max in, which is when we find a maximum number of a specific species that is present in a single frame in the video. So you can have two or three sharks coming through, but if you're seeing two in the frame at one time and not three, you're only gonna say that they're two sharks. So it produces a conservative estimate of what is there, but at the same time, it's robust, it's accurate. What are you oh, seeing? Slow down, slow down, slow down. Normal speed. <laughs> All right. These images bring scientists closer to the wildlife they're dedicated to studying. The coolest thing so far has been the tiger shark, actually. <laughs> My favorite might actually be just a potato bass on the sand, getting in his own head, trying to figure out how to get into this bait canister. What I didn't expect was to see as many green turtles as we saw at Aldabra. I've never seen a hammerhead shark before and we saw one just randomly come out the blue for a brief moment, and that was probably the most exciting thing. Ruff's footage also has broader scientific value. We've got this footage forever. We can share this data, we can share the, the raw videos with as many people as we want. I can analyze it, and maybe somebody else would like to use it for a specific question that they want. Different entities can get different information, quantitative and qualitative data. This archive of marine habitats can play a role in policy too. The Seychelles has dedicated over 30% of our EZ as marine protected areas. So I think this contributes greatly towards enhancing further protection um, when you actually know what's there, why are you protecting it. This is us actually figuring out cool, okay, this area is protected and it's protecting X, Y, and Z. We need to continue collecting data in order to be able to enforce protection. If you have no idea about now, you can't go in five, 10 years 
and then check, okay, is it helping? Is it improving anything? In addition, Ruff's footage can engage and inspire the public. Sharks, just as an example, so many people are, are afraid of them, but as soon as the footage comes on the screen and people are seeing it, they're like, oh, that's amazing, it's so beautiful, it's, it's, a, it's a unique and powerful creature. There's so much you can tell someone until they see it for themselves or they feel it. These research will help greatly in educating people as to why it is vital to actually protect our oceans in our home. This footage allows anyone who watches it to forge a deeper connection with marine life, whether through scientific inquiry, by informing policy, or simply sparking the curiosity that has always led us to break the water's surface with cameras in hand, or in this case, on bruvs.